Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Terran Recreation, written by Average Cake Enjoyer. When Scythene had accepted her dear friend Ishikawa's invitation for some human recreation, she readily jumped at his offer. How couldn't she? Everybody needed a hobby to enjoy, and for her, experiencing other species' cultures was a guilty pleasure. It was just so interesting. Not that she'd just gush about it out loud, though. She had a reputation as a Federation captain to protect, but seeing as she was off the clock, uh, a little indulgence now and then never hurt anyone. And it's not like anything could go wrong. The reputations humans had for being thrill-seeking lunatics must have been blood out of proportion, right? Just because they're a little unhinged when it comes to everything else doesn't mean that they can't enjoy their off time doing something peaceful. Or so she hoped. As they pulled up to their destination, a feeling of trepidation crept up to her back as she noted that they arrived at an airport. How strange. She reached over and tapped her friend on the shoulder. Friend Isakawa, why, why, why are we here? Oh, uh, you know... We're just here for the flight. We get on, we get off, and we enjoy the view. He said with a smile. A smile that she'd seen on other humans when they were up to no good. Pushing away the ever-approaching feeling of foreboding, she opted to believe that they were only going to take a short flight to a nice, scenic destination. Oh, okay, uh, that sounds interesting. That's the spirit Having found a spot, Ishikawa parked the car. Now let's go. Time waits for no one. Scythene sweat dropped. She tugged at the harness, tightening a few straps as she waited for Ishikawa to finish putting his own harness on. Finding nothing else to do while waiting, she pondered as to why she had to wear the harness for a quick flight and why she had to sign a uh, concerning amount of paperwork. Something's not adding up here. Before she could have any second thoughts, a pat on her shoulder pulled her out of her own thoughts. Turning around, she saw Isakawa in his own hearts, a weird-looking backpack on his hands. Ishikawa looked her up and down. Looking good. Looks like you know how to put on a harness. I am your superior and a Federation captain. Of course I'd know how to put on a harness, she said, scoffing. I don't command a trillion credit vessel for nothing, you know. Tch, that's right. You signed my paychecks, he said with a click of his tongue. How about me? Harness looking good? After giving Ishikawa a quick once-over, she gave him an approving nod. So, friend Ishikawa, why are we wearing harnesses for a flight like this? And what's with the bag that you have? The harnesses are for our safety, and this... He gave the bag a little wiggle before leaning closer and whispering conspiratorially. This is a surprise tool that'll help us later. Scythene squinted at him, trying to find any sign of deception in his face. After finding none, she let out a deep sigh. She really hoped the view he promised would be worth it. Oh, but if it wasn't, and this whole thing was a disappointment, but she didn't want to be disrespectful. Hello, uh, done thinking, he said, waving a hand over her eyes. Ishikawa to Scythene, please respond. Huh? Oh, right, um, 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 we should get going. She said as she walked away, still in a bit of a daze. That's my line. He pointed in the complete opposite direction of where she was going. And the hangar's over that way. She flushed a deep lilac. Oh, oh, uh, uh, lead the way. As Scythene entered the plane, a barrage of questions flooded her mind, such as, why was there a concerning lack of seats? Why were there people outside checking our harnesses? Was this really just a normal flight? What was in Ishikawa's bag? Why are we the only ones here? She shook her head, willing away any intruding thoughts, jogging it up to human eccentricity, as she sat in front and sitting Ishikawa. Are you having second thoughts? He asked. We can get off now if you like. No, it's just uh, that this all seems, uh, off. She replied hesitantly. I trust you, though. Uh, wrong answer. He mumbled under a cough. Huh? Uh, what was that? I said... Take this and scooch a bit closer so that I can hook you up. He waved a pair of goggles and some earplugs in front of him. It's for your, uh, uh, safety? After taking the things he offered, she moved to sit closer to him, 
Putting on the goggles and earplugs as Ishikawa fiddled with the buckles on his harness as he latched her to himself. Just as they finished preparations, they felt the plane rumble beneath them as the droning of the engines filled the cabin. Uh, it, it looks like they were finally getting out of here. Ishikawa clapped his hands and rubbed them together with glee. Can't wait! She eyed Ishikawa with suspicion, raising herself as she felt the aircraft lurch upwards as it took off. Sure, hope I don't regret this. She was definitely regretting this. Saitin really didn't know what was going to happen, but her fight or flight instincts were on full tilt. Her brain was working overtime, trying to figure out what was going on. The lack of seats, Ishikawa being far too excited for a flight, the harness. I swear I saw something about release of liability in one of those waivers. Things just weren't adding up and she really wasn't liking it. She tapped Ishikawa's leg, getting his attention. Friend, uh, Ishikawa, hmm? When do we get off? She asked, feeling a bit antsy to the touch solid ground. Soon, a wave of relief washed over. Oh, good. How soon? A loud ding cut through the droning of the engines and a green light popping up on the opposite end of the cabin. Before she could question what was happening, the door beside her slid open and a strong gust of wind crashing into them. That soon, her skin cycled through a rainbow colors as she panicked. Close the door, huh? What did you say? He asked, inching his way over to the open door, quickly finding himself sitting on the edge. Couldn't quite catch that. Ishikawa, so stop moving, she squealed, covering her eyes with her tentacles as she thrashed in her harness. I, I want to get off this plane, please. Get off the plane, uh, that can be arranged. Uh, just look at me for a second. Reluctantly doing so, she opened her eyes to him, looking back at her with a maniacal smile. Better keep your eyes open. You really wouldn't want to miss this. What? She couldn't even finish her sentence before Ishikawa flung himself, and consequently her, out of the plane. Saitin could only open her mouth in a silent scream as her brain completely blanked, having been overwhelmed by the situation. The last thing she heard before passing out was the joyful whoop of her friend. The muted sounds of rushing wind was the first thing that she could register. Her mind still fuzzy as it rebooted itself. That was a weird dream. Prying her eyes open, she was greeted with the sight of the ground slowly inching its way towards her. She stared ahead blankly before she realized what was happening. Not a dream, not a dream. Hey, Carpenter, nice that you finally can join me, Ishikawa said from behind her. How'd you enjoy the catnap? We're going to die. Oh my God, so we're going to die. Her skin started to cycle through all of the colors of the rainbow as she freaked out. Not like this, not like this. We're not going to die. Calm down, enjoy the ride, he said calmly, as if we weren't hurtling towards the ground. In a way, he was right. The view was amazing. The azure hue of the sky complementing the various shades of green beneath them, combined with the serene feeling of the wind rushing up past her. Oh wait, she was falling fast, back to screaming, I guess. Ah! The ground was getting closer. Saitin, now able to pick out individual buildings in the distance. This is it. This is how I die. Ishikawa chuckled at a panic. Hey, at least it'll be quick, right? You, you, you demon, she screamed, bathing in her harness. You no good heathen. I'll, I'll have your head. Whoa, whoa, calm down. Quit squirming. Or we're actually going to die. She slammed her eyes closed and made a silent prayer to her deities as the ground sped ever closer to her preparing for the inevitable. That was until she felt herself get violently jerked backwards, the sounds of wind disappearing in an instant. So, this is it. I died. Maybe I'll finally meet my brood mother in heaven. So long, world. A distant voice called out to her. Hey, uh, are you okay? Wake up. Is that Ishikawa? This isn't heaven. It's hell. What sins did I commit to deserve this cruel and unusual punishment? I can hear you mumbling. It's not Hal, and you're not dead. Open your eyes. That's strange. Even in death, Ishikawa finds a way to haunt me. Oh, you little. Bidding herself get shaken, she snapped her eyes open. Instead of fire and brimstone that she was expecting, she was met with a lush landscape as far as the eye could see. The blue sky sitting on top of it. Hearing of the fluttering of material, she looked up to see the colorful spread of cloth billowing above her. Ah, where did that come from? The secret tool for later, that's where. 
My voice behind us said, Are you finally back in the land of living again? Oh, there was just Ishikawa. Did I say that out loud? You've been mumbling to yourself ever since you thought you died, he confirmed. Ah, other than you coming back from the dead, how would you enjoy your first time skydiving? The gold glare Scythine gave him sent a shiver down his back. I'm docking your pay for this. Ah, oh, man, he sighed to himself. I still do it again, though. You chaos scrum... Oh, oh, whatever. Just take me somewhere safer next time. Next time, huh? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Ever heard of, um, bungee jumping? End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Mid's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.